Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about food plot failures. Now we've been in business here at Northwoods for 12 years. Uh, I've personally been doing food plots for 20. Uh, and then between all the uh, wonderful folks we work with and have on our team here at Northwoods, we've got well over 100 years of uh, combined food plot experience. And these, these uh, food plot failures seem to be the most popular, most common. Uh, the first one's wrong planting depth. So if you look at uh, like a brassica, clover, radishes, um, those aren't very big. And a lot of times we've seen when those fail, uh, an individual might work up the ground and put the seed down and then work it again with like a drag, disc. Uh, I've even heard of a tiller. And that sets that seed way too deep. Um, typically when we plant brassicas, clovers, radishes, uh, we'll work our fertilizer into the ground. If we're going to do a brassica pea planting combination, we'll get the fertilizer and the peas in the ground with a light disking, dragging, get them covered, pack it down, um, and then we'll spread these little tiny seeds and then pack it again. That's as, that's as deep as you need to plant those, just pressed into the ground. Now, the opposite end of the spectrum is the cereal grains, the peas, beans, uh, our soil builder, our green forage blend. Those, uh, we like to see those in the ground a half inch to an inch. Now, there's kind of an unwritten rule that I go by. As big as the seed, that's as deep as it needs to be. So those little tiny clover, brassica seed, radishes, they don't need to be very deep. Uh, these bigger grains, peas, beans, you know, those are, some of those are pretty large seeds. They need to be in the ground fairly uh, substantial. <clears throat> now, this no-till, um, I don't know if you want to call it a craze or a fad or whatever, these no-till planting systems, um, they do work uh, in some locations with proper rain, uh, the buckwheat method, um, throw and grow. Again, you need a lot of moisture, you need really good soil, um, you need ground that's going to hold moisture. Uh, to get these to be successful. Um, just because I personally, I like to see them in the ground, um, but there are folks that I've seen do these with that buckwheat method or with, you know, spray and roll. But again, if you get uh, a lot of moisture, a lot of rain prior to and after planting, it'll work. But there's a lot of soil conditions like clay, sand. I just would never do that with these. I'd, I'd make sure that they're in the ground. Uh, timing, number two, <clears throat> soil temperature. Very big with uh, a few of our products. Our buckwheat, screen, Egyptian wheat, uh, and our soil builder. Very critical spring plantings, um, and it's very critical to make sure you've got the proper soil temperature. Buckwheat, we get a lot of people ask, is buckwheat able to be frost seeded? Uh, you know, a lot of you experienced food plotters understand that, no, you can't frost seed buckwheat, but there's a lot of rookies out there. There's rookies every year ask it that question. I've seen it on social media, can I frost seed buckwheat? No, you cannot frost seed buckwheat. It is not frost tolerant. Um, same thing with uh, our soil builder blend. Can't frost seed that. Uh, it's got buckwheat in it and frost will kill it. Frost will kill most of the plants in the soil builder. So you're usually not planting soil builder until your last chance of frost is gone. Then it's safe to plant it. Now the food plot screen, and, and to some extent Egyptian wheat, but our HD food plot screen, we have seen so many failures um, through, I believe, the 10 years we've sold it, nine years we've sold it, due to too cold a planting temperature. Now we, we have in the directions that, um, you know, you really wanna make sure you pay attention to that soil temperature. We actually use a, a kitchen food grade thermometer to test the soil. Uh, temperature before we're planting. Here in Upper Michigan, typically that's around Father's Day weekend. But what happens if you plant the food plot screen, uh, if it's too cold, it's not going to do anything. You know, you could get rain after rain after rain. And what happens to that seed is it soaks up that moisture and it rots because it's not ready to germinate. It's not warm enough. Uh, and then some poor individual who planted too cold, uh, all of a sudden we get the warm weather. Soil warms up, no germination. Northwoods gets a call, hey, you sold me some you know, crappy seed, it's, there's no germination. No, um, unfortunately, you planted when the soil temperature was, cru uh, was too cold. So be very careful, very careful on the soil temperature, especially with the food plot screen. Uh, pay attention to what you're planting in the spring. 
in what the soil temperature is. <clears throat> uh, another one, seeding rate. We don't see this with every one of our products. We see it with brassica, we see it with the screen. Um, sometimes if, if you get carried away with clovers, it could choke itself out. Uh, but brassica is probably the number one, uh, f and I, I don't really want to call it a failure, uh, but you'll get a green food plot and what happens is, is it, it, you know, it, it gets stunted, it turns colors quickly because brassicas require so much nutrients, they're just taking it up so fast, there's nothing left by the time you get to September. Uh, stunted plants, uh, sometimes unpalatable to the deer. Uh, we recommend six pounds to the acre with our brassica blend and we, we, we really want folks to stick to that. If you look back in our videos, uh, I think three or four months ago we did a video on how to properly seed a brassica planting where we did half the plant uh, planting walking north and south and then we took the second half of the bag and went east and west. We really like that whether it's brassicas, uh, clovers, these small, these small seed plantings, we really like that. Try to do it in a couple of passes, try not to get it all at once. Uh, the food plot screen, same thing. Uh, let's say you've got a 200 yard long screen and you need I don't know, four pounds. Well, let's do two pounds and try to get to the end and then grab two more pounds and then come back the other way. Try not to do it all at once. Uh, if you break it up, it seems to be working out much better. But uh, with these particular plantings, um, the seeding rate we have seen, and again, I don't want to call it a failure, but they didn't uh, meet the standards of what these typically can reach. We didn't get those big, tall, leafy plants and then the sorghum screen choked itself out four or five, six feet tall, and then uh, eventually falls over uh, with the first rain and, and snow. Spring. <clears throat> a couple months ago, I saw a video. A gentleman was talking about um, doing the buckwheat method, and uh, he was recommending you to his viewers uh, go out and spray a combination of Roundup and 2,4-D, and then go put your buckwheat down. And I thought, you really need to reevaluate the information you're passing on to, to your followers. Terrible advice. Okay, you cannot put 2,4-D down right before not only buckwheat, but just about any broadleaf. And 2,4-D will kill broadleaf, but there's a residual effect. And if you, what that, well, that, what that means is it's still gonna be in the ground. And it could be in the ground for two weeks, it could be in the ground for two months. It depends on how much you use, you know, what type of ground you're spraying, um, who you talk to, and their, their opinions on how long it's going to be in the ground. But, but the bottom line is there's, there's an effect, there's, there's a carryover. You do not want to spray 2,4-D before you plant broadleaf. Absolutely not. Now, <clears throat> the one that I think is really... We're dealing with this a lot lately. Spraying Roundup on switchgrass. I don't think that's good advice. I think it's terrible advice and here's why. Um, switchgrass is not cheap. It's the most expensive seed we sell. And if you've never planted switchgrass before, um, you may not realize what you're looking at. You may not realize the seed has germinated. Uh, we just talked to a gentleman this morning before I shot this video. He bought uh, some of the RC switchgrass and he was all set to go and frost seed um, his switchgrass and then was going to spray Roundup glyphosate this spring. And I said, sir, why would you risk, you know, hundreds of dollars in hours of your hard work uh, spraying switchgrass on your, or I'm sorry, spraying Roundup on your switchgrass? I talked him out of it. I said, this is... You know how you want to do it. Now, <clears throat> I, I don't think it's very good advice, but there are people that do it. I know people that have done it with success. There's, there's people watching right now saying, John, you're wrong. I do it all the time. Great. But we deal with new switchgrass uh, planters every year. And I have seen my fair share of, you know, beautiful potential switchgrass plantings killed because somebody sprayed Roundup on switchgrass. I don't think it's very good advice. I do not personally do it. I'll never do it, and nor will I ever recommend it. Um, so that's just the two that I've seen uh, as far as spraying. Uh, one piece of advice, and we, we kind of touched on this uh, in our last video, 
if you're going to spray anything, like let's say this is a clover food plot right here. Uh, we got grass in it. We want to spray some clethodim, especially if this is the first time you've ever dealt with chemicals and spraying. Find a good source for, uh, for the chemicals. We use Keystone Pest Solutions. They do a wonderful job. I trust them. Let's say we're going to do this clover. We got some grass in here. I would just do this little area right down here. Just this just little spot down here. See how it does. Make sure you didn't make it too hot. Uh, make sure you actually got clethodim um, or whatever you're going to spray. Uh, and, and, and just see how that clover reacts. You know, But again, if it's the food plot screen or if it's switchgrass, uh, and I'm going to try to spray quinclorinac to kill foxtail or Johnson grass, or I'm going to try to spray 2,4-D and kill broadleaf, I still do it. I'm only doing a small area. Okay, I'm just doing a small test area. So to try to avoid this failure, make sure you're doing a test strip. Okay, just to, just, just to be safe. But again, no 2,4-D before broadleafs. And in my opinion, and I deal with hundreds of customers every year, do not spray Roundup on your switchgrass once the seed hits the ground. Weather. This one was a bugger last year. <clears throat> we had most of the Midwest and a lot of the eastern states had a drought. Um, right here, same thing. I um, was pretty disappointed with weather underground last year. That's our, our weather app that we use, and they just seemed to couldn't get it right. You know, you're going to get rain, you're going to get rain, you're going to get rain. And, and we just never got it. It just dissipated across the state of Wisconsin for us personally for, for three years, or I'm sorry, for, for three months. So one of the things we, we told hundreds of people who were in the same situation we were in, get the seed buried, okay? Go out, do a light disking, get the seed covered, and that way when the rain does come, that seed's not sitting on top of the ground burning up you know, you might get a little bit of dew that's going to kickstart that seed. You know, I don't know how much I buy into that theory. It takes a lot of moisture to germ, uh, to, to get a seed to go. Um, but the problem is, even if dew does germinate that seed, there's no moisture in the soil that's going to die. So we told a lot of people this no-till. I think there's a time and a place for it. Um, we'll get into that in another video. But if you've got sandy soil, you've got clay ground, you've got a high, you've got higher ground that, that drains quite well and it doesn't hold moisture very well. Folks, I'm really, I'm really liking getting that seed buried. We have a, a property we, we are working on north of here that it's just solid sand and some rock and some clay. And every food plot we did, um, we buried the seed and it turned out wonderful. So, you know, it's... Weather related, you know, if we, we have some of those summers that it just, it never stops raining. I think it was like three years ago. It just, it just didn't stop. And, you know, we were getting rain every three, four or five days. I remember we were starting our fall food plots and in some of the, some of the areas there was six inches of water on the food plot. I think you're set up fairly well to do a no-till situation. Um, but if you have another weather, <clears throat> excuse me, if you had another weather pattern next year or this, this coming year, like we've had the last two, very dry, uh, very dry the end of July, very dry August, very dry September. I'm really looking at getting those seeds buried and catching any and all moisture that's below the surface of the ground. So weather probably is the number one failure. And that also includes a very cold, very wet spring will affect the switchgrass germ. It will affect the uh, food plot screed germ. It's going to definitely affect the growth of our soil builders. So Weather is one of them we really can't control, but you can kind of use your planning techniques to, uh, to deal with what Mother Nature's throwing at us. Last one, <clears throat> following instructions. <laughs> I think I used to be hollered at as a young kid about following instructions, so that's kind of funny. But anyway, I saw a, a video the other day. A um, gentleman had bought some of our HD screen put it in last year and uh, was telling his followers he was pretty disappointed with it. Well, I paid attention. I, you know, like I said, we reach out and we try to look at every failure a Northwoods product has because we're going to have them. It's just the way it is. Well, this particular gentleman was saying, you know, this didn't uh, turn out, you know, it's supposed to be a 12 to 14 feet tall. It didn't hit that. And 
you know, that didn't even grow over here and just pretty disappointed. And I get it. So I messaged him and I said, well, <clears throat> first off, my thoughts are you didn't plant it wide enough. Obviously, you didn't use weed control because it was full of a broadleaf. So that's going to definitely stunt the screen. It says specifically in the instructions, don't plant in lower wet areas. Uh, it doesn't do well. Well, he planted in a lower area and it flooded and it didn't grow. And you know, we talked before about how this screen doesn't like uh, wet ground. So, you know, having a failure because you probably didn't follow the instructions as closely as you should have, is that Northwood's fault? I don't think so. Okay. There's a reason why with the food plot screen we include those instructions because it's such a critical part of a habitat plan. Now we're going to put planning instructions on our website um, for everything. We're going to have one page to where folks can go right to a page. We were sending these pages out upon request um, but there's just you know there's just so much bad information out there. We want to try to streamline um, the planning instruction process the way we do it. So we're going to have that on our on, on our website uh, fairly quickly. But you know whether you're food plots or you buy a computer or a dishwasher or whatever everything in life comes with instructions and this is a big one. We saw a lot of failures because folks didn't follow the instructions. So um, that's kind of an important thing. There's a reason the instructions come again with whether it's a food plot or, or you know a piece of something you buy for your house. Instructions are a pretty important thing. So uh, I just wanted to hit on that, you know, because guys are guys and girls, folks are starting to get ready for food plot planning. I mean, uh, you know, I'm watching it snow out the window right now, so we're probably three to four months away here in Michigan. But there's a lot of folks down south um, that are starting to think about things. So. You know, kind of, if you've had a failure and you can relate to any one of these, hopefully this helps. You know, if you've got questions, by all means, call. I'll answer the phone. Uh, we answer the phone, emails, we'll answer. We'll answer text messages, private messages. Uh, we're here to help. We don't want to see this, but we know uh, part of the business, you are going to see this, okay? But what we try to do with the thousands and thousands of customers we have, we're trying to knock this down as much as we can every year. So again, if you've got questions, by all means, get a hold of us. Our next video is going to be, uh, we're going to start answering questions. It's going to be in a day or two. Uh, the the uh, Email for that is asknorthwoods at gmail.com. We've got a lot of questions, some pretty cool uh, questions that people are asking. So hopefully we're going to have one or two we're going to answer here uh, within the next day or two. But uh, really appreciate you guys watching. I hope hopefully this helps, uh, prevents anybody from having a failure this year. I know we, uh, we can't control weather uh, and there's just things sometimes we can't help and, and we do have a food plot failure, but uh, we're trying to minimize that as best we can. So thanks for watching. If you want to follow along, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in a few days.